Hello everybody and welcome back to Mom's Vlog 80. Today I'd like to talk to you about neuroblastoma. What is neuroblastoma? Some think it's a brain cancer. Well, actually it's not. Back in 2010, on November 5th, Elijah was diagnosed with this cancer called neuroblastoma. <coughs> when the doctors first told us, I was like, neuroblast, what? I've never heard of it. When you first hear neuro, you automatically assume and think it's brain, and it's not. I'm going to give you the Wikipedia version, and then we'll go on from there. Neuroblastoma is the most common extracranial solid cancer. That means it forms solid tumors in the bones in childhood and is the most common cancer in infancy. So most infants from when they were first born up to three, four years old is when it's the most common. And surprisingly, because you think leukemia would be, and it's not. With an incidence, about 650 cases per year, it is rare. Not so rare, but rare, rare enough that it's not even nearly as close as all the leukemia uh, diagnosis only a hundred cases per year in the United Kingdom. Nearly half of neuroblastoma cases occur in children younger than two years old. It is a, it is a tumor arising from the neural crest, if you want to get technical, element of the sympathetic nervous system, which is also known as SNS, sympathetic nervous system. It most frequently originates in one of the adrenal glands, he didn't have it start in the adrenal glands, and that's near the kidneys. But it can also develop in the nerve tissue in the neck, chest, and abdomen, and pelvis. So Elijah's tumors started in the neck, and in his lymph nodes in his neck. Neuroblastoma is one of the few human malignancies known to demonstrate spontaneous regression from undifferentiated, undifferentiated, I can't say it, state to completely benign cellular appearance. There are three categories. There is the low, the inter intermediate, and the high risk. The low risk disease is most common in infants and good outcomes are common with us observation or surgery. Whereas the high risk disease is difficult to treat successfully, even with the most intense multi model therapies available. And as you can see, he has his headphones on. So if I have to read anything severely serious, he has his headphones on. Also, he knows what the outcome is when it comes to this type of cancer, so he is very educated on what could happen. The signs and symptoms, uh, really, Elijah didn't really have any signs or symptoms of neuroblastoma, except for one weekend before um, we found out he was sick, I left him at home and um, he had like a cold flu. And I came back three hours later, there was this massive lump in his neck and it freaked me out. Uh, we spent a month in the pediatrician's office saying it was just swollen lymph nodes. So there, he didn't have any signs. He acted like a normal healthy boy. But sometimes it says neuroblastoma are often vague and making diagnosis very difficult. Fatigue, loss of appetite, fever, and his most one was fever and joint pain and joint pain in his legs. He always complained about his legs hurting. And of course, when you're uneducated, you just don't know if that was a serious problem or not. Most of the time, it shows up in the abdomen. A tumor may cause a swollen belly and constipation. A tumor in the chest may cause breathing problems. A tumor pressing on the spinal cord may cause weakness, inability to stand, crawl, or walk. See, he didn't have any of these things. Bone lesions in the legs and hips may cause pain and limping. That would, that's what he would have at three years old. A tumor in the bones around the eyes or orbitus, that's happened to a few um, other neuroblastoma patients I have gotten to know. Neuroblastoma often spreads to other parts of the body before any symptoms are apparent. So that's what Elijah has. He his was very clear and known that he had it there. There is, there is no known cause for neuroblastoma. It just shows up in the fetal. And I really believe that Elijah may have been born with it and it just didn't present itself until he was three years old. And the reason why I believe that is because I looked at pictures when he was a, a baby 
all the way up until he was three. And I had noticed a slight difference. This side of the neck seemed bigger. And I thought maybe it might have just been like muscle or he was going like this sometimes. But I did notice kind of like a streak right here before, way before he got sick. So, you know, I look back and I'm like, you couldn't see it with the naked eye but you could see it when you look back on pictures. And even then, you wouldn't have known because we were very uneducated about what neuroblastoma is or never even heard of it until it really grew out. So I really believe that he might have been born with it and most babies are. So he could have, it just didn't present itself until he was three years old. So some of you have asked, what is the prognosis to neuroblastoma? Well, it ranges. Every kid is different and every kid gets treated differently. Some go through the same protocols or some trials that are the same, but every kid reacts differently to each treatment. So it's really not like just a generalized treatment and prognosis, but they give a percentage and it's a good range of percentage. It says between 20 to 50% of high risk cases do not respond adequately, which is Elijah's case, to induction high dose chemotherapy and progressive refractory. Relapse after completion of frontline therapy is also common. And obviously that's Elijah's situation. He's relapsed three times right so far. Further treatment is available in phase one and phase two clinical trials that test new agents and combinations of agents against neuroblastoma. So the agent that he had with this last run of chemotherapy, he's had these two chemotherapies, but the third one, which was a pill called the Millennium drug, was a phase two trial that we tried. It was an agent that we tried along with the other chemotherapies. It is also known as a chemotherapy. Most long-term survivors alive today had low or intermediate risk disease and mild, mild courses of treatment compared to high risk disease. The majority of survivors have long-term effects from the treatment. Survivors of immediate and high risk treatment often experience hearing loss. Elijah has, have, has had uh, hearing tests and he has experienced high frequency hearing loss. Growth reduction, uh, thyroid functions, his thyroid is looking really good at the moment. Learning difficulties, he's doing really good. He's extremely smart, which is a blessing. A, a greater risk of secondary cancers affected uh, survivors with high risk disease. So to me, whether he's a survivor um, for neuroblastoma, there is a possible chance that the, a secondary cancer may come on because of high risk are trying to take advantage as much as possible and have as much fun as much pot as much as possible whether we go to Disneyland or you know in the past we've gone to Legoland to just a, an extreme birthday to we we give him as much as experience as we can and we have a new one that Elijah wants to try is called iFly and so we want to do that one day and I think it'll be an amazing experience for him from high doses of chemotherapy for four or five six seven years so it looks like to me this is going to be a lifelong thing so we he deserves to live the best life possible because 90% of the time we're sitting in the hospital feeling sick from disease or from chemotherapy or from a cold or flu or infection. So, you know, if you see us out and about going camping at places and stuff, we are trying to give both our boys the best experience life can give them. And so not only, you know, obviously we're going to show them love and compassion. How can you not? I'm a mother. I'm a loving mother. And really quick, the history of the neuroblastoma. There used to be a guy named Rudolph uh, Virchow, the first to describe an abnormal tumor in a child as glio, glioma. And some people that you may know may have uh, glio, glioma blastoma if that is a brain tumor that is just so weird how they say it's so it's so switched around a neuroblastoma is a nervous system and a bone cancer and glioblastoma is a brain cancer it's just so turned around but in 1864 Rudolph Urchow was the first to describe an abnormal tumor as glioma the characters of a tumor from the sympathetic nerve system and the adrenal medulla were noted in 1891. So as rare it is as it is, and 
um, not knowing about it and was very uneducated about it, never heard of it before. This cancer has been around since the 1800s. That's crazy to me. In 1910, James Homer Wright understood the tumor to originate from primitive neural cells and named it neuroblastoma. He also noted that circular clumps of cells in bone marrow samples, which are now termed Homer Wright, oh, it's a long word, pseudorocytes. If I can say that right, I'll put the word right here when I say it, okay. So neuroblastoma is not a brain cancer and the only thing that has happened with Elijah's brain in any instance that we've had is that actually he had a tumor on his skull growing through the skull um, bone at the top of his head and the 70% of it was sitting on top of his brain. Any bigger, it probably could have ruptured his brain and causing bleeding from his brain or brain damage. So we are super thankful that we got on it, onto it right away and heavy doses of chemotherapy um, decreased it significantly, is, is significantly and after three months it was gone. So neuroblastoma has attacked his bone marrow. He was covered head to toe, 90% um, covered in tumors in his bone marrow. And then he had the tumors here. He had tumors in his legs, like I had stated before. That's the reason why he was having leg pains at three years old. And um, we've been fighting this four years now. He has high risk, stage four high risk, which is probably the worst of all. If you're gonna get it, that's the worst of the worst. And so Elijah just keeps proving to the doctors that he's a fighter and that he continues to fight. And yeah, this fight's probably not gonna be over for a while. And we are expecting him to be a survivor and be a testimony to other people and bring hope and he's gonna grow and have kids and he's gonna just prove everybody wrong and that is our speaking forth in faith that he will fight uh, defeat this battle and I just don't want him to be defeated but we also know the realities of this cancer and how deadly it can be and so um, we don't want to be prepared but we have to somehow mentally prepare ourselves not to be shocked um, if any if the case worst case scenario so that is neuroblastoma. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Also, I do daily vlogs every day. And if you'd like, uh, press that little red subscribe button down below. We'd love for you guys to join along in our journey. And we will see you guys all next time. Love you guys. Ciao.